Some of the probes lend themselves best to a talk format. One of the strategies that you can use to engage students in small group discussions is called the card sort. This strategy works particularly well with the probes that are in the format of concept cards. This is an example of a concept card probe where students have to identify examples of a concept. For instance, which of these things are examples of matter, which ones are not examples of matter, and then explain their rule or their reasoning, their thinking about how they decided whether something is an example of the concept, for instance, matter. The strategy works like this. You can take the printed version of this probe and cut it out into individual cards. And then you give each small group a set of cards. And they sort these into examples of the concept and non-examples of the concept. One thing to be aware of when you're giving students instructions for this strategy is to make sure that they place their cards in columns and not stack them one on top of the other. Because as you circulate around and observe how students are engaged in the strategy, you want to make sure that you can see all of the cards. Card sorts are really effective for promoting learning because they engage students in talking through their ideas, in formulating their explanations, and engaging in argument with each other if they don't agree. It's also a strategy that informs instruction because it's very visual. Essentially, all you do as you're circulating around the room is you can visually look and see which cards are placed in which columns and stop and listen to students as they're talking through their ideas. This can give you a lot of information that you can then use to plan subsequent instruction. There's a tendency to use the formative assessment probes at the beginning to elicit students' initial ideas, but the probes can actually be used throughout a sequence of instruction, at the beginning, throughout the learning process, and even at the end for reflection. A strategy that you can use to get students to reflect back on how their ideas have changed is called, I used to think, but now I know. And students fill in the blanks with what they used to think when they first responded to the probe and what they now know, which are their new ideas, how they've e either changed or been solidified as they went through the learning process. So it's a reflection strategy that gives students an opportunity to look back and think about how their ideas have changed. And it also is a strategy that you can use to see if your instruction was effective, to see if students actually changed their initial thinking and move towards the scientific idea. A common pattern of interaction in classrooms is called the IRE pattern. I stands for initiate, the teacher asks a question. R stands for respond, the student responds, and E stands for evaluate. The teacher then evaluates the answer like, yes, that's a good answer, or can you tell me more? Well, we want to break that pattern of IRE. Um, IRE is like a ping pong game. It essentially goes back and forth, teacher to student, teacher to student, teacher to student. We want to break that pattern so that it's more like a volleyball game when you're using the probes. So instead of ping pong, volleyball, you set up the ball, it goes to another student who takes it, and then it might be passed to another student before it goes over the net. So unlike ping pong that goes back and forth, a volleyball question goes from student to student to student, where students build upon the responses of others, and the discussion gets richer and richer before it goes back to the teacher to throw out another question. So there are a couple of ways to get students used to using this strategy. One is just by having students sit in a circle and pass a ball, toss a ball back and forth. And whoever catches the ball then answers the question, tosses it to another student who then builds upon the response of that student or adds a new idea and then tosses the ball 
to another student, and the ball has to go back at least three or four times before it goes back to the teacher again, who may put out another question. Another important thing to keep in mind with this strategy is by having the students sit in a circle, you establish the pattern that they are, they are looking at and speaking to each other rather than always looking at the teacher when they respond to a question. And that's why it's important when you use this strategy for the teacher to stand outside of the circle. And one of the moves that I use when I'm teaching students how to use volleyball is if I see that they're answering the question to me and they're looking at me, I point at my eyes and then I point at the group. So I make sure the students are looking at the group and not at me when they're answering the question. Because if the probe is being used to initiate discussion in the class with students, then you want students to, talk, to be talking to each other, not to the teacher. This inquiry preview will help you prepare an object's motion activity. This hands-on activity requires 15 minutes of prep time, takes 20 minutes to complete, and works best when students are placed in small groups. The purpose of this activity is for students to investigate what affects the rate at which an object falls. Gravity is responsible for pulling objects toward each other. As the force of gravity pulls skydivers towards Earth, there is another force acting in the opposite direction. This force is known as air resistance. It is a factor that affects how objects fall. Air resistance is the force pushing against a moving object, and its strength depends on the speed and surface area of a moving object. Look at this example of paper being dropped. The two sheets of paper have more weight than one sheet of paper. But once the single sheet of paper is squeezed into a ball, it has less surface area. Notice which hits the ground first. As you prepare for this activity, complete this checklist before class starts. Gather the materials. For each student group, you will need a golf ball and a table tennis ball. To help ensure a smooth activity, include these topics in your pre-activity discussion with your class. Model for students how to hold the balls and release them at the same time for more accurate results. To keep students from focusing on the balls hitting the ground, drop them into a padded box or waste paper container. This will keep students from observing the results before doing the activity in their groups. Recommended finger position is holding each ball between the pointer finger and thumb of each hand, with palms facing down. Hold arms straight out in front of you at shoulder height. Students should follow the procedure for this activity. However, here are a few key ideas to make this activity successful. In steps two and three, remind students how to hold the balls and release them. Before recording their observation for the first trial, have students practice this procedure until they can consistently drop the balls at the same time. Remind your students that they should let the balls fall freely and not add any extra force when releasing the balls. For steps three and four, remind students not to count any trials that contained errors. Instead, they should repeat the trial. Students should have observed that the balls hit the ground at the same time. Weight did not seem to affect the balls when dropped from shoulder height. When students have finished, bring them together to discuss their findings. If some students were unable to view the expected observations, show the Inquiry Rewind student video before starting the discussion. Then, use the questions in the Teacher's Edition to guide your discussion.